Yep, don't try this one at home or work. This was just an exploration of possibilities. Welcome to the Welcome back to Kung Fu Maintenance, where I show you how to make the most likely repairs you'll need to make in your lifetime. If you'd like to get the latest videos, subscribe, and then hit the little bell icon right at the subscribe button, and it'll notify you of any new videos when they're released for you. Got an OAC call. It kind of goes cold for a little while, and then it stops. That's usually uh, typical of a fan motor that quit. Um, we'll pull the disconnect and then pull the cover on and uh, we'll check the capacitors and see what we got. Here's the disconnect and I may need to go inside and turn the unit on but first just going to check. like a 35 and a 5 hanging back there and look you can see some sparking on the on the back wall so it's possible it could have uh, blown a fuse um, <laughs> it's possible it just lost a wire lead look at that there it is right there so question is where does it go which is most likely to the top of should be to the fan motor oh boy yeah it's right there see it there oh boy hopefully there's enough room to pull something down and reconnect let's take a look here well that, that makes for an easy one um, but I will check the capacitors and stuff anyway um, now that the while the water is disconnected. I had a uh, major plumbing repair going at the same time and so that was on my brain. Pretty easy to check here. As well as a pretty intense washing re machine repair to get to. Uh, and a few hundred other things needing attention. Here, but it's not as hot as some days have been. It's probably about 100 degrees. So, much better than a little, a little overcast today. And I, I was up on the roof doing some preventative maintenance anyway so this worked out kind of nice. Just going to check the microfarads. Already we pulled the disconnect and discharged the capacitors. This one, wow, it's all rusted out and everything anyway but I discharged it and since the lead's broken I probably can already test it. One lead to each side get a reading it it's reading 0.019 got a bunch of ooey gooey sticky stuff on it aye 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 looks like a bad capacitor I had gloves on when I was doing the roof maintenance I'm thinking I should have left them on now they're like just disposable gloves for sure I'm changing this capacitor that. There's that. Aye, aye, aye. That's all nasty. Oh yeah, I got a rag in my bag. I'm really glad for that. Okay. Well, I can use that on the new one. Uh, I'm going to check the other capacitor here. I have a feeling I'm going to be replacing this as well. Hard start kit, yellow start wire, and the common, common wires. Quick check. Faster says 15.31, and that's bad. And the fan one. Don't 
doesn't read anything. Zero. Point zero one nine point zero one five. That's bad. Okay. I'm gonna be trying out these Titan Pros going with a different capacitor on the 35. Let's see if these hold up a little bit better. It's a 440, so I'll show you on the new one, just testing it right out of the box. Let's see what we measure at. So on these, this is a 35 microfarad capacitor. So we're looking for 35 plus or minus 5%. So that's 5% of 35, which would be 1.75. So as long as we're between 33.25 and 36.75, your capacitor is good. This one measured at 34.37, which is good. So even though this one was below 35, it was at 34. 34.37 that's a good capacitor it's within the 35 plus or minus 5% okay before I get too crazy push it a little bit back. I'm going to uh, restrip this wire and gonna check and see if we can actually get to this other fan wire to be able to restrip that so I don't have much room up there Not much room at all. I have some special connectors that I could use for this. Definitely not much room at all. But what would you do? I can try and make this work. I've got these special connector that's a, a butt connector. I'll do that. Get done. Yeah, so this connection made me wonder. I wonder if that wire actually winds up connecting to this wire. Uh, internally. You know, I know it goes straight into the motor and then goes out from there. But these reversing wires, it makes me wonder if, uh, you know, if I needed to, if I could just connect the wire to there and make it work and uh, bring this down through. You can hear the jackhammering of concrete in the background. That's that plumbing repair. Uh, irony, same wire color, but I don't know, you know, but it makes sense to me that that would be this would be the eventual ingoing lead into the motor and, um, you know, would come off there, but I don't know. And the easy way to check that is to do a continuity test Let's see. on the wire that I haven't stripped off yet. So here's a continuity test going here and then on the end of that wire there. Let's see. Yep. <laughs> kind of funny, but I bet you it goes to this one as well. Let's test it. I'm not getting a reading. But I am getting a reading to there. So, kind of funny. Just, just a thought is that I could, if I can't get that wire to connect there, then I, in theory, would be able to connect there and make it work. So, going to see how this one works out. I, I, you know, I know it's still, obviously this one's at 15 and it's still working, but it's not how it's supposed to be, you know. This one's even got a little bulge in it. on one side unless you add a hard start kit so 
from many ACs. That's how you can tell the start wire is it's usually by itself on one side. So. And then the hard start kit, one lead will go to each side. I forgot to go inside and turn the unit on. I'll do that in a minute here. This lead on the hard start kit is a little loose. So, we'll tighten that up a bit. Any loose connections are a place for heat to build up. Not nice and tight connections. Better. And there we go. Okay. Now for that fan deal, I'm going to try to pull off the insulation up there off of this one. And I'm still really curious if this actually goes to there, what would happen if we connected this that way. My thought is just disconnect this side and connect just this one. Definitely curious. Then curiosity killed the cat, as they say. I'm pretty sure that that's how that would work, but I'll see if we can pull off the insulation here. Definitely not much room. But I think enough, enough for me to do what I need to do. Always trying the idea I always mention. <laughs> so I am pretty sure that that would do it. Here's my new five microfarad. This one's a Sepco. Just to show that I've these ones are have been good for me. Four point nine three, so that's within phase. So connecting up the fan deal here. I'm just, I'm still curious to see if this would work right. And if I can run my deal up here. Have to be able to reach there.
this one. I wonder if you guys are hoping I would try that. <laughs> Let's see what I got. Got a, another piece of wire. It would be really easy for me to try it. Let's see here. Little experiment. Let me see if this wire is good. I have my bag. It's not the ideal wire. Yep, sounds good. What I can do is extend this, connect this brown one. It's actually in there really good. I'm just going to leave this hooked up here for now. I'll run this one here. And I'll run this one to the wire. Just to test this out here. Not going to get too crazy with it yet. Just want to see if this will work. Okay, everything positioned. It's not gonna mess anything up. Just hanging there. This is nothing's touching up here. Okay. I can use my long deal and push in the contactor and we'll see what happens. Safety glasses. Safety first. I don't actually know if the fuses are blown, so let me test that first. And I'm kind of glad I haven't turned the unit on yet because it really gets gives me a chance to do the control test because I can control it at the, the contactors. That one's good. That one's good. Both are good. So now I'll plug this in. Disconnects in. And now we're going to see if this fan motor starts up and go from there. <laughs> Little experiment. Okay, I've got only the insulated portion and pushing in the contact. Yeah, it's spinning the correct way. So I was right. That is how I can do it. Okay, so going to re-pull the disconnect. That worked perfectly. Bypass that wire and uh, I should be able to even feed it through the conduit. So, pull that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to re-discharge the capacitor. This capacitor holds a charge in it even after the power is disconnected. This one te technically cancels out in the fan motor, but better safe than extra crispy. So, I can basically just cap this one off. And then we can use this one and run it down into the deal. So it's all straightforward, easy enough. And mostly easy enough. That was kind of fun, little experiment. My brown wire trying to get out of this insulation. Electrical tape.
That one does. There we go. I need to feed this through. Sorry. Uh, it'd be better if I have a little bit longer wire. prefer to have less connections, but I will. Here's what it is. I'm just going to wrap the other ones with wire tape, electrical tape here. So this connection's good. And I need to run a new wire through the hoping to run it through the conduit. Alright, well. Can't all be easy. But this one's pretty easy. Well, it worked out good. Theory, I'd be able to pull the wire through the conduit. My other option is still just to connect this um, right here to that existing wire. I do believe I have enough to connect to. Can still try that. Let's see. This logistics. Complicated.
think I'll be better off with my other wire. Okay. This isn't perfect, but it will work. Tricky to strip inside there. I was able to just go up through the cabinet right there. What I can do is wrap a little piece of uh, cardboard, which is an insulator, and what I can do is take this and kind of protect the the wire. Wrap the wire just like that. That way, the wire is in the cardboard. So, just keep it from rubbing on the metal. Okay. And now we can pick up the, the other little piece of wire and pull it on through. Okay. And now we're in. And can actually just go straight to the to the other wire, like so. If I can find a place to anchor the. Or two, I guess. Yeah, it's always away. Always, always, always away. Okay. Don't know what it is yet, but there's always a way. Cable ties. Cable tie in right here. I'm going to use a second cable tie. And I should be able to hang it right here. And then I'll just connect this one back down to here.
There we go. And it's in there solid. I barely need the cable strap. It. not going anywhere. Okay, and now I can actually splice this to here instead. This one I'll just cap off and I'll tape it off. This one will pull apart. Okay, this one I can crimp an end on there and put it there, or I can just wire net it together and tape it. Got my options. Anyway, I'm sure I'll take some heat from this one. That's okay. It's all, I'm already taking heat. <laughs> um, I'm only taping this one here just to get it out of the way. Definitely custom deal. That'll make these better. Obviously wouldn't do it this way on the ground. I would run these in. And there's an option to run this back through the conduit, but Okay. We're all set there. I'm going to fire it up one more time. Plug it in and fire it up and just make sure everything's good. And then I'll go inside and turn it on for longer. I'll go inside and turn it on. Let it run longer. Let it do its thing. Okay. So 
started right up good. Fan motor is spinning good. Starting to cool. Press is nice and cool. Line's nice and cool. We're gonna give it five minutes. Good. Okay, the unit's running nice and cold, doing what it's supposed to do. There's a heat from inside. Now, one thing I'm curious about is if there's any voltage on that that wire. So I'm gonna check that. safer. Alright. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off discharge the capacitor. Just gonna get a piece of electrical tape. It was only showing about eight volts on the on the wire there, but just wanna make it better. Safer. Hopefully you have any kind of issue. So I'll just wrap that deal. And discharge both capacitors. piece of electrical tape and wrap it up. Yeah, this one I may go back when it's cooler and rework things uh, a little bit better, a little bit into the conduit and, you know, just rework things all around. But I uh, just thought I'd share the survival mission with you and... Okay, uh, I wrapped it up. Now yeah, pushed it. Yeah, you know, the exploration the of possibilities. We make things a little better every day. And uh, this one was just kind of fun and thought I'd share the experience with you a little bit different than what I would normally do. But yeah. Okay. It's not perfect, but it's done. And the unit's all set. Good to go. Okay, I can put all the covers back on. This wasn't a perfect uh, situation. Looks like it has a five minute delay that's been disconnected down here. But it was interesting just showing what can be done. Not saying that's uh, the best way to go, but under the circumstances, uh, it worked out good for me. Um, again, if the unit was on the ground, wouldn't do it that way. And could always rework this and run the wiring through the conduit. And just pull that down through and run it through the conduit. But since this already has the deal going through the lid, it's 
really not any different than what it was. I'm sure there are many people that will disagree with me about that, but that's okay. That's the way it is, at least for now. shows there's more than one way to get it done. All right. Thanks for watching. Chunk for maintenance. Over and out. Walking through this world, I could feel the pressure, but I could